Okay, so um, this is a, an attempt to show you, this is a didgeridoo, um, how we apply the beeswax to make the mouthpiece. So a friend of mine who lives in Cooktown has given me some beeswax and I've just um, poured hot water into this bowl and I've been able to soften it and now I can gouge it out with either my finger or probably a spoon is better, teaspoon and it's soft enough to put onto the top here around the rim of the didgeridoo and of course that will form a nice soft beautiful um, mouthpiece to blow through and beeswax is usually pretty solid at room temperature but I had to soften it I'm gonna to have to work it around here so this is um, my first go and I've only been described what to do and when they gave me the beeswax it was very very firm but um, this seems to be working and I'm gonna have some beeswax left over which is awesome because I'm sure I will need to um, update this mouthpiece rim that I'm making. A friend of mine in another town, Mackay, Bruce Wicks, who makes Wick sticks, he uses um, uh, a technique of uh, carpentry, I suppose, to to just finish off the mouthpieces so they're so smooth, the wood is so smooth that they, they don't require this treatment. However, I thought I'd give it a shot and I'm pleased that he can mould it with a little bit of effort and then it's not actually the hardest thing in the world to organise. So you can see it's beautiful. Um, didgeridoo and obviously hasn't had the wax on it for some time and don't worry I'm not going to play it until it's hard and I think I've put a little bit too much on the sides there so the wax just needs heating up rather than melting in a pot so we can see the job that's going on there um, I'm just going to work this with my fingers a little bit more and what we might do try to make it as um, even as I can to make a nice thing to blow into what I might do is uh, let this harden and then give an update when it's done how, how I got it um, finished. Yeah, so I'll just keep working that round now, trying to make it as even as I can. There's a little bit of extra in there, I might use this paddle pop stick, it's very handy. Just to push that residue off and put it somewhere on the rim. <clears throat> might be just a little bit more there. It's obviously a good way, um, good substance to grip the didgeridoo so I'm just going to have to use the stick here and try and add a little bit to the rim on there and build it up and all it required was just um, the hot water let's build it up and smooth it off before it gets rock hard well not quite rock hard but certainly you can't do what I'm doing. It's very pliable. It tends to be a little bit uh, down here. Uh, here's my finger. So it's built up almost 10 millimeters on the top there. 
I can't say that I've done the neatest job, but for a first go, it's not bad. I'm just taking off some of the sides here, which has been excessive, so that's not part of the blowing area. I'm putting it back on the top. And hopefully it has, before it hardens, um, pretty reasonable mouthpiece. Yeah. And I might be able to further and smoothen it. Just with my fingers here inside as well. Let's make it as smooth as I can. Yeah. So we'll come back when that's hardened and I'll give you an update and maybe in him have a a blow through of it. Alright. Yeah so now I'm just leaving it um, set. And we'll come back and see if we've been successful. It's a beautiful one. Um, beautiful. Yep, it is an absolutely wonderful didgeridoo. It's about two and a bit meters. And it's got some painting on it, so that was pretty amazing.